rainbow that would be set in the clouds. And he makes this covenant promise with Noah and with all the earth of what he would not do again in this particular fashion. We are thankful that God communicated with Noah and we're thankful that he communicates with us by his word. Noah was blessed this, in this way, and we are as well. But then finally, under this second point, Noah was a blessed man because he had a job to do. He had a job or work to do. Notice in Genesis chapter 9, in verse number 20, And Noah began to be a husbandman, or a farmer, and he planted a vineyard. Now, for many of us, sometimes our jobs are not exactly blessings, but to be able to have a job or work to do, it is a blessing. We are thankful to be able to provide for our families. We think about the New Testament, 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse number 8. But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is an infidel or an unbeliever. Strong words there from the Apostle Paul to Timothy about the job that we should be doing, the work that we should be doing. The idea that we as followers of God should work is not new. If you're still there in Genesis, you can actually go back to Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 15 and notice that Adam and Eve had instructions. At the end of verse number 15, God tells them to tend or work or dress the garden and keep it. They had a job as well. We have jobs to do. And many of us are still blessed to have those. Now, once again, it's a little hard to get a figure on the numbers. But unfortunately, during this pandemic, the numbers have been up to or close to around 40 million jobs that have been lost in these United States of America. Not everyone is blessed to say they've been able to keep their job. And if, if you have been through that kind of struggle, we are sorry for that. And we would help in any way that we can. Many people have lost their job. But Noah was blessed because he still had a job and he still had work to do. For us as Christians, even if maybe you are retired or maybe you have lost your job the way that it was before the pandemic, we still have work to do. Strong words from the New Testament again. We think about Paul writing to those in Thessalonica, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 10. You don't work, you don't eat. Pretty simply said to me, pretty simply understood, Noah had work to do. Work is a blessing. Let us not take our blessings for granted. As we often say from this pulpit, do you mean it when you sing it? Or when we sang it a few moments ago. Count your many blessings. We are a blessed people. We think about the words again to those in, in Thessalonica, 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. In everything give thanks. Let us not take our blessings for granted. God was good before the flood. God was good during the flood. God was good after the flood. And the same is true with the COVID-19 pandemic. We are thankful that our God is good. And we are a blessed people, even though we sometimes struggle in this life. Number three this morning. We are thankful that after the confinement is over, God is still in control. Again, in relation to Noah, when Noah's confinement was over, God was still in control of the universe. Question, who was in control before the flood? God was. Who was in control during the flood? God was. Who was in control after the flood? God was. Let's, let's go through a few verses. I, I like this, this outline and the way this is put. Let's look at a few verses together. Genesis chapter 6 and verse number 17. Who is it that sent and caused the flood? God speaking says, Behold, I myself am bringing flood waters on the earth. It wasn't Mother Nature that got upset. It wasn't some freak of nature that happened. God sent the flood. Go forward to chapter 8, verses 15 and 16. Who is the one who told Noah to exit? It's God that told Noah to exit the ark. Look at verses 21 and 22. Who is it? And this is an interesting passage that assures man there will still be seasons. Look at verse number 22. God says, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer and day and night shall not cease. God was the one and is the one who says there will still be seasons. Notice in chapter 9, verses 1 through 7, who is the one that sets the criteria for our conduct? 
Who is the one that tells us how to live? It's God. Look in verse 11 of chapter 9. Who is the one who said there would be no more flood? God is the one who said there would be no more flood. And look at verses 13 through 16. Who is the one with the authority to say here is what the rainbow means? It's God. It's not just a pretty thing in the sky. It's not just a theme or a logo for some so-called movement here in these United States. It is God who says what the rainbow means. It is God who caused the flood, who allowed Noah to exit, who assures the seasons that are before us. God was and is still in control of the universe. Before, during, and after the flood. Before, during, and after any pandemic that has come and may come. In Hebrews chapter 1 and verse number 3, the Hebrew writer says it is God who upholds all things by the word of his power. And the psalmist again in Psalm 24 and verse number 1, the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness. We can be thankful as Noah was after his confinement that God is still in control of the universe. He is still the great sovereign of the world around us. But then fourth and finally this morning, as we think about lessons from the confinement, Noah, after his confinement was over, still had to live in a world of wickedness. When Noah's confinement was over, he still had to live in a world of wickedness. We know about the flood, that it cleansed the earth, so to speak. But it did not remove man's tendency to sin against God. In fact, we're very familiar with the verse, Genesis chapter 6 and verse number 5. Before the flood, then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his, of his heart was only evil continually. We might translate that in our words and say that the evil was off the charts. The evil was unbelievable that was going on in the world at that time. And we see here just a few pages in our Bible later, Genesis chapter 8 and verse number 21, that humans would continue to do evil things. Notice there, the Lord smelled the soothing aroma of the offering of Noah. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake, although, although, notice, although, God says, although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. You see, man's tendency will not change. Humans would continue to do evil things. Because the, the point is, is before the flood and after the flood and in 2020 and 2021, as long as this earth continues to stand, we still have freedom of choice. And we're thankful for that. Folks still had the freedom of choice, but you know what the other side of that coin is? When that is the case, we oftentimes make lousy choices. Man oftentimes makes poor choices. Not only that, look in your Bible at Genesis 9 verses 20 and 21. Noah, Noah the righteous one, Noah who by faith built an ark, Noah who walked with God, Noah himself was one of the evildoers. He was a husbandman, a farmer, and he planted a vineyard. And in verse 21, then he drank of the wine and was drunk and became uncovered in his tent. Good old Noah, walking with God, Noah was one of the evildoers as well. Look in verses 22 through 25, and we see that Noah's son was among the evildoers. After the COVID-19 confinement, we still live in a world of evil. John says as much in 1 John chapter 5 and verse number 19. The King James says the whole world lies in wickedness. The New King James says the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. We are very familiar with Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. After this pandemic we still live in a world of evil. But God still has expectations for Christians. Let's look at those very quickly. And if you have your Bible Go with me to Ephesians chapter 5. God still has expectations for Christians, for his people. Number one, act like children of light. 
Act like children of light. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 8. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the world. Walk as children of light. Yes, we still live in a world of wickedness. No flood, no pandemic is going to get rid of it. We have to be the light of the world. God expects Christians to act like children of light. Number two, refuse and reprove darkness. Ephesians, excuse me, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Christians need to not only act like children of light, but refuse and reprove darkness. We still have work to do, especially when it comes to being Christians serving the living God. And then number three, if you have your Bibles, you can look in John chapter 8. John chapter 8 and verse number 12. Number three, we need to present the light of the world. Present the light of the world. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Yes, we still live in a world of darkness, but God expects Christians to act like children of light, to refuse and reprove darkness, and to present the light of the world. If I could, for just a moment, make uh, an application of something that I think you'll remember. Do you remember September 11th, 2001? Do you remember the response of our country? Many people stood up and they vowed to serve God. They vowed to pray to God more often. They vowed to go to church services for a while after the September 11th tragedies. And they were obviously awful tragedies. Many people gave more thought to spiritual matters. But what happened after October and November and December and 2002 and 2003 and 2004? As is natural for many people, even after a terrible tragedy, they began to turn away. They began to go back to the sinful ways of the world. What about June 2020 or July? Will you give more thought to spiritual matters? Many people are doing the same thing. This is awful. This is tragic. Many people have lost their lives. Our country is suffering. And I'm going to give more thought to spiritual matters. I hope you do. I really hope that you do. But I also hope that you stick with it. Past July or August or 2020 or 2021 as we were able to be together. Confinement is no fun. I think we can agree upon that. We do not like restrictions on our movements. It's frustrating to us. But Noah was confined too. And there are at least four things that he was able to take from the confinement that I think we can take as well. Knowing that we have an opportunity again to worship the Lord. Knowing that we are a blessed people. Knowing that God is still in control of the universe and even knowing that there is still wickedness, that we have an opportunity to go forward as children of light. Where do we go from here? Well, it begins in the next few moments. We're about to sing this song of invitation to encourage you, if you need to become a child of God, that you would consider doing that. That you would hear the word, that you would believe the word, that Jesus is the Son of God, that you would repent of your sins, that you would confess Jesus as Lord and be baptized for the remission of your sins so that you could be added to the church by God to begin to live faithfully. But as many of us know, it's hard. And we do turn our backs, just as many people did in 2001. And for all of time that humans have been on this earth, we turn our back on God. Maybe you stand in need of God's second law of pardon. Coming back to Him, confessing your sin, repenting of those sins, allowing us to pray with you and for you. We are so thankful for this opportunity to be together to worship him we are thankful as well for this opportunity to encourage you if you need to make a change in your life you can do so now as we stand together and as we sing